test, test, one, two, three, test, test, one, two, three. What's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBit Solutions. Hope that you guys are all having a good start to the morning. It is Friday, October 28th, and the market has made nearly, uh, really has made a recovery. We have Apple up 4.5% on the day, which in my opinion, based off of how it reported earnings, um, you know, definitely uh, does make sense at uh, Amazon. Based off of where we bought yesterday and where we're at right now, amazing move, right? So we bought at an average of like $91. Right now it's trading at 100, beautiful move there. NASDAQ market, being completely honest, it is looking a little bit on the overbought side, right? Uh, you know, a really, really nice push, which is amazing to see, you know, on a, on a Friday. But uh, I closed out my long position and I am, uh, I'm just day trading it, right? My bull position, I'm uh, getting ready to enter into something like, like this. So um, adding an increment of around 500 shares, which is about $25,000. Again, uh, $25,000 or of the 500 share increment um, is like adding a one to two percent position size based off of what I normally trade with. So I made, uh, made 2K on TQQQ because overbought. Yeah. So again, let's not forget that it's never a bad idea to lock in profits. We got QQQ, just waiting for a little bit more indication of a pullback. I would love to add more to my position. Here we go. We're looking a little bit healthier. So if we actually pull on back, adding $53,000, there it goes, 1,000 shares of SQQQ. All right. Nope, buying pressure is still high. Look at that, we're struggling to make higher highs and higher lows on SQQQ. So that's essentially what I was looking for. I thought uh, those significant red candles would have made sense. And again, just because I'm playing the other side does not mean that you have to, right? There's nothing wrong with just staying bullish, right? So if you stayed bullish and you locked in profits, even just staying cash. So if you lock in profits because you're like, no, you know, NASDAQ is overbought. I do think it's going to pull back and I don't want to give back all of my profits. So there's nothing wrong with locking in profits. That doesn't mean that as soon as you lock in profits, you have to trade the other side. Sometimes, you know, I often find myself making more mistakes if I do choose to trade the other side, right? Anytime that you open a position, you're opening yourself to risk. So I think as long as you understand that, you know, if you're really trying to be uh, conservative and super selective, then maybe holding back and not forcing that entry maybe isn't a bad idea. But let's see which way we end up going. So here we go. Testing, testing. And it looks like it's going to try to make new highs. Look at that. So I'm going to want to be careful with SQQQ and jumping in too early, right? So I, I did take a position and just so you guys could see where I'm at, I want you guys to be able to see it. Oh, that's TQQQ, my bad. I want you to be able to see it here. So I have $134,000 in TQQQ. I bought when you guys saw me buying, right? 5376 is my average, just so you guys are aware, okay? Tesla is tanking, really? <laughs> okay, yeah, no, you guys weren't joking. That I mean, that should help out my position. But obviously, Tesla, we're going to need a lot more than Tesla. And if Apple is super, yeah, even Apple is beginning to curl back over. You guys see that? Look at that RSI. Look at that MACD. Um, I, I think we have a little pullback, you know, to come, right? Which is good for my SQQQ position. But I'm going to want to be maybe a little careful, right, uh, with my position size. I bought in too early with SQQQ. Yeah, you want to be very careful with that stuff on, um, because, you know, we're very, very bullish right now. The bulls are out. The bulls are trying to be out. Uh, market has sold off for such a long period of time that this time 
the market doesn't almost even need to justify a reason on why it's uptrending. It's just going to be a bull run, right? Because of how oversold it is. And you have to respect that. That it's not going to take much for the bulls to be out, right? There it goes, making higher highs. I'm going to add another 500 shares, which is $27,000. Ricky, would you consider this a bull trap? I really wouldn't think so. I, I genuinely think people are, you know, at least for myself, I, I really do value companies like Apple and Amazon at these oversold levels. I do, right? I have no intention of selling my Amazon position anytime soon. Like I got really excited that I was able to pick some up at around $90 a share, but that's just me, right? Um, it doesn't mean that it can't continue to sell off. It just means that I bought enough, but not so much that it's like, I can tolerate this, dude. Like, in my opinion, Amazon's the least of my worries um, of, a, of a company that I see that might go bankrupt, right? Or might not do well. I mean, Amazon's killing it. And yeah, it's going to have rough months and rough quarters like anything, Um but Amazon, in my opinion, is not going anywhere, right? It's not going anywhere anytime soon, in a good way. All right. Looks like we're testing support here right around 218. Let's see if we form some higher lows or lower highs, really. That's what I'm looking for. And look at that. The bulls are out. Look at that. Look at that momentum. Testing to make new highs. Check the break above 2040. Watch for the break above 2040 or we're going to make lower highs. Do you usually buy against the trend? No. Um, I, I sold my TQQQ position just so you could see. I sold my TQQQ position already. I reduced my position size. I was bullish, right? I was bullish uh, during that pre-market session and... Um, it was just overbought enough that I was like, hey, you know, I need to look out for myself. I didn't even sell up here at 2056. I ended up selling closer to 2025. And it's a it's a common thing that my Learn Plan Profit group, um, you know, we joke around about it of like, you know, uh, oh, I, I sell too early. Right? I often sell way too early. I often sell and it continues to uptrend. Um, and it's okay, right? Uh, I would rather be someone that locks in profits versus someone that does not, right? Um, I could always get better at not selling as much maybe too early, but that's okay. Something I can get better at, right? I think a worse habit to have is not selling at all. And that, that would be more troublesome. You know what I mean? Lowe's co coaches, what do you... Uh, what's, uh, better to lock in profits than having to cut losses late. I agree. So uh, Liv, Liviu asking, it would be nice if you could fill us what you're doing pre-market. No, never. You could never know what I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'll, I'll be posting more in the trade ideas section for LPP. So minimum, how do you get profit? How much profit do you get per day? What? Uh, how much do you get per get profit per day? It's different every day. Sometimes I lose money, right? Like two days ago. Um, two, three days ago, lost money. There is no average right now. I mean, because I was trying to work towards my daily goal. It's not average. I don't want to pretend that I, I try to make 20,000 every day off of just trading. Um, you know, I'm happy with a $3,000 day. I'm happy with a happy with any green day. Um, but yeah, I've had some solid weeks. Um, not not this week, but the week prior and the week before that, I was averaging about 23K a day. Um, that was my average, if I did the math right. So um, I also trade with, you know, I uh, start the month off with $400,000 and I run it up to as much as I can and then I pay myself at the end of the month. And then the start of November, I'll start again with $400,000. So, yeah. Consumer sentiment, yep, it should be in about six minutes. That is correct. Thank you for the reminder. 
consumer sentiment and pending home sales, which might actually, I mean, every report has been acting as a positive catalyst. So that could be a reason on why I close out my position a little early. I think that would be the smart thing to do. Regardless if I'm up or down, I just need to be aware that, you know, things can get worse before they get better. Let's see if I can get out at a nice price point. I have five minutes until that consumer sentiment and the pending home sales comes out. I heard Amazon did terrible during earnings. Yeah, Juan, you didn't have to hear it if you tuned into our dang live session. You would have seen it. You would have seen it sell off 20%. I've, you would have seen the company lose $100 billion in five minutes. Just kidding. Is the 400K including 4X margin? No. I mean, I have four. Uh, I have four hundred thousand dollars in my account. I don't. I trade ETFs, so therefore I don't. I I have a margin account, but I they don't let me use two or three or four times X of what I have when I trade triple leverage ETFs. No, I have whatever dollar amount I tell you I'm trading with, or it's the dollar amount. I don't take margin. Do people talk about how much they trade with with the margin that they have in their account? That's not fair. How does that make any mo- uh, any sense? Yeah, ETFs are only 1.33, meaning that if you have $10,000, you can trade with $13,000. That is correct. Here it goes. I'm going to reduce it. We have a consumer sentiment report, and I don't care if it ends up taking off, right? Yeah. To show off, yeah, probably. Um, how long have you been trading with 400K? I change it all the time, right? Five seasons that I, you know, I was thinking of possibly leaving my account at half a million for the month of November. But I did really good this month. So I was like, maybe I could use the extra start of the capital at half a million um, to start off in November. And then I remind myself, I'm just like, yeah. I'm like my, you know, devil's advocate. I'm, I do this to LP, our LPP team all the time. Where everyone's super excited for all the money they made, and I always remind them, your red day's right around the corner. Your next red day's right around the corner, right? It's important. It's important to remind yourself that it's always not just rainbows and butterflies and profits and you know huge months. Um, you trade with a million dollars? No, <laughs> I just explained it. I trade with four hundred thousand. I bring it back to four hundred thousand all the time. It. Again, it's it's not. People think that I, I don't know what analogy I could um, I can give you guys that everyone can understand. It's the the best analogy I can give you is, you know, just because you have more money doesn't mean that you should trade with more money, right? Imagine myself as you know I'm a skinny guy, and let's say that there's a bodybuilder that I go work out with, you know, I'm gonna hurt myself. I could I could probably lift heavyweight but i'm gonna hurt myself more than doing any good if i try to keep up with a bodybuilder right i'm not built that way yet i don't understand i don't have that form yet i don't have that kind of thought process right you're gonna hurt yourself if you tried to trade with more money that you could actually tolerate do you get what i mean so if you're really here to learn how to trade, focus on learning. Focus on, you know, uh, I'm going to use it with whatever I end the, the month at. You know, my goal for this month, uh, just one minute left, one minute left until the consumer sentiment report is out. Uh, I'm going to talk about the percentage growth because, you know, um, I'm working towards my, my biggest month and it's $300,000 for the month of profit, right? Um I'm going to talk about the percentage gain and what it is. So you guys can put into perspective where some of you guys that are trading with $1,000 or $500 or $10,000, your percentage gain is not bad, right? I mean, I don't know if it's going to be the same as mine, but it's not bad. But I think once you see, you know, if you see my dollar amount and then you see what you're making, 
that's going to be a big difference, right? Because I'm trading with a lot, a lot more money. I should be. I should, I, and I say that respectfully. Like I should be trading with a lot more money than you. I've been doing this for years. Here it goes. Consumer sentiment report is out. Watch the market react. I should be trading with more money than you. Just like a bodybuilder should be lifting more than me, right? They're conditioned for it. They've trained for it. You haven't, right? You're learning how to trade. You should be empowered that you're trading with a little bit of money. You're going to make mistakes. So you want those mistakes to cost you a little bit, not a lot of it, right? So um, I think once I show my percentage gain, you're going to see that it's not as far-fetched in comparison to my dollar amount of what led to that growth, right? Um, and this is my biggest month. So you're like, maybe even half of that is not even that unrealistic of possibly something that you can hit. And I think that's what I really want. I want you guys to put things into perspective that what I'm doing is, is not, you know, completely out of left field, that it's, it's somewhat attainable as time goes on and you begin to trade with more money as, as you become more confident and more experienced. So... All right, 59.9 consumer sentiment report. Previous was 59.8, so this is actually better than expected. That's not good. That is not good. Bad news is good news right now, and that is not good. So it seems like people are getting more confident about the market. Market should be selling off right now. Uh, so what's the percent for the month of September? Just in context for those that just joined LBB. Again, I'm going to share once the month is over. So uh, I'm not sharing it right now. I'll share it when the month is over. Okay. All right. And again, uh, you might be asking, well, Ricky, why did you sell your position? And then now you're buying back. Remember, my job is not to predict the future. My job is to prepare for it. I knew the consumer sentiment report was going to come out. So therefore, I knew that it could move and shift the market. Although direction was in my favor, it could completely go the other. It could have been a lot worse if this report was worse. So I decided to close it out and reduce my position size. Now that it's sold off and now that it looks like it's returning back to its previous level, then I go back to you know buying more when direction is in my favor and when those reports are done. Again, your job is not to predict. Your job is to, to prepare. So how do you manage fees? There's no trading fees on Webull. Here we go. Pushing, pushing, testing EMA. Let's see which way we go. Testing, testing, testing the break above. for higher highs hey make sure to reset your alerts depending on the the range that the market's trading at it's one of the most important things that's super simple to do for everyone everyone can always update their alerts so you stay up to date if it's trading within a different range of where you previously set alerts at Damn, Ricky, you sound groggy. Yeah, I'm always, I just have allergies, man. It's all good. I'm not sick, though. This is just how I am. I'm just sick of your BS. Just kidding. Here it goes. Getting rejected off of EMA, so QQQ should be at support. Watch for potential support here. Uh, please be careful. So if you're shorting the market, we do not have confirmation that we're selling off or that we're breaking below. If we break below this, this would be a really good sign for the uh, for shorting NASDAQ, but we're not there yet. We're probably going to retest 20, uh, 275. So thanks for hosting this stream, of course. I appreciate you guys tuning on in. I really do. I hope that I earn your thumbs up, and I would love to host more of these streams. Again, um, personally, they're, they're, you know, these are just streams that I normally offer 
that I just offer for our LPP team every morning, right? Um, you're more than welcome to join. It's the second link. You guys know where the links are at. You guys know where the discount is at. It's the biggest discount that we offer. It's the second link in the description. So if you like the ability to watch me trade live and you'd like to experience this every day, I only offer it to one group and it's every day at Market Open and it's our LPP group. Um, big push up going to retest uh, 275. There it goes 275, 275, 05. And look at that. The bulls are out. Huge push. Oh my gosh. But again, second link in the description. Uh, pending home sales should be out already. Yeah. So they came in worse than. That's actually really good news. So pending home sales came in worse than expected, negative 10.2%. It makes sense because uh, if you actually pay attention to. Uh, mortgage rates. Mortgage rates are the highest that they've been, I think, in the past 25 years. So this is worse than expected. But again, right now, bad news is good news, right? So this is something that I view to be somewhat encouraging for the overall market. Like we are slowing down. And that's exactly what the Federal Reserve wants. The Federal Reserve wants the market to be slowing down. It's exactly what the Federal Reserve wants. <laughs> Okay, I see a couple of you guys are tagging me on Instagram. I was like, what are these notifications? But yeah, uh, you guys are, feel free to follow me on Instagram if you guys don't already. It's the third link in the description. I sometimes post updates there as well. Um, but most importantly, I, I post like uh, motivational stuff there. So, but again, that's that third link in the description. Testing, testing, testing. Come on, you dirty dog. It's looking bullish. to have some form of risk management, right? So risk management at previous lows. So if we make new lows, I will sell my 2,500 shares. Make sense? Tesla is falling. That should be a good thing for me. Yeah, there it goes. Lower highs and lower lows. How's is Twitter delisted? Ooh, look at that. How beautiful, huh? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Amazon showing signs of a resistance. I'm going to have to set my alert for the break above or the break below. There we go. What happened to Twitter? Twitter got delisted. Uh, because Elon bought it. So Elon bought it and took it private. That's the whole point of him acquiring it is so no one else owns it. So he bought so he bought everyone's share pretty much at 5420 is what he said. Bought the company for that. Will Twitter come back? Uh, will the options be worthless? Um, I'm not too sure about that. You should still be, um, what's it called? Bought out at a strike price of, you know, whatever it is, The if you expected it to go up. I hope that, you know, you weren't trying to short it. Um, but Elon said in, in one of his statements that he intends Twitter to come, uh, to return to being public maybe in three to five years. So, I feel like it's a QQQ day. Yeah. <sighs> what made you trade as QQQ? So, Albert, I already explained that. I don't know if uh, you're paying attention, but I was in TQQQ. 
right? TQQQ was showing signs of an uptrend. It looked a little bit on the overbought side. So when something's overbought, normally it pulls on back because it pushed up very quickly. And because it was so overbought, I saw there to be potential for it to pull back. So I locked in profits, right? So you can see here, locked in profits on TQQQ. And what happens when TQQQ pulls back? SQQQ goes up. So you must have just been a little late to the live stream, but that's exactly what it is that I was anticipating. It's that that we would pull back after this nice rally, right? Everything was showing signs of being weaker. We have Amazon showing signs of being weaker. We have uh, Apple was showing signs of being weaker, but Apple's now rising. So this this is the scary part of like, okay, Apple needs to chill out, but it doesn't, right? If it continues to uptrend, I'll just close out my position on SQQQ and then I'll re-enter TQ, right? No emotion, no, no hard feelings about it. It is what it is. I'm not here to complain or to point the finger at, you know, oh my God, the market's rigged. No, you know, the market does what it thinks it needs to do. And I'm here to take part of it. So Amazon is falling. Yeah, I like it. Only 100 likes. Yeah, we only have 370 likes, but we have 3,000 people on the live stream. I guess people don't want me to host more free live trading sessions, right? I guess they don't. Here it goes. Watch for the free fall on QQQ. Here it goes. Going to add another 500 shares. All right. All right, testing that same resistance level. Testing that same resistance level. I would love to see some higher highs here. But NASDAQ market needs to sell off. Remember, it's not if SQQQ pushes that the NASDAQ market drops. It's if the NASDAQ market drops, SQQQ pushes. So... Yeah, we have 670. Appreciate you guys. We're a little bit closer to 1,000. At least one third of you appreciate me. Almost. I guess at this point, it's more like, you know, one fifth, one sixth. There it goes. Do you guys see that? Adding a little bit more, we should see some selling pressure on. QQQ, yep. So let's see some lower lows. The more that this thing sells off, the more money I make on SQQQ. There it goes. Beautiful setup. Remember, we prepared for this. So stepping on the gas a little bit more. Please do not copy me. Just because I do something does not mean that you need to. This thing can completely shift directions. And if it does, I'm going to have to hold my position accountable and myself, no one else, right? So please, if this makes sense to you, great. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Never be afraid to lock in profits. I see direction to be in my favor. Again, we saw how overbought this was. We saw the pullback potential. So it looks like now we're going to be testing around 273 for potential support level. It's actually not selling off as aggressive as I thought it would. So um, it's nothing crazy. Okay, we're testing, what, $55 a share? which was yesterday's kind of resistance level. So let's be careful here. Okay. See it push up a little bit more. Come on, 55. We are not getting that $55 push. Look at that, 54.90, 54.80. We're struggling, we're pulling on back. So we're going to go back to probably retest that EMA. Let's see if the bulls are out. There it goes, testing support. There it goes, nice big push. We're going to be testing EMA here. Testing, testing. Thanks for the stream. Learning a lot with you. I appreciate that, Luis. I appreciate your time. You know, thank you for waking up early and joining us. I really do appreciate it. So hopefully we're earning your thumbs up and hopefully you can subscribe. And maybe one day, if you see enough value in it, you can join our Learn Plant Profit Group. 
And for all those that do want to join, again, we're running a big discount. It's the second link in the description. It's the biggest discount that we offer. So if you want to be able to watch me trade live as soon as Monday and every morning after that, it's that second link down below. Let's see for this change of direction. Let's see if we find a support here. Testing, testing. Again, pullbacks are part of it. It's never going to be perfect. Pullbacks are part of a uptrend. It's never perfect. But if we actually make lower lows here, then that's not ideal. We're supposed to be making higher lows, right? So we can't be selling off as low as we did before. Thanks a bunch of gear course is the best money I've spent. Uh, cheers from Canada. What's going on, Andy? Happy to have you here. Morning, Ricky. How long is the discount sale going on for? Uh, there's no rush, Tim. Uh, we run discounts from time to time, and I'm, I'm big on, I'm a deal hunter myself, right? I'm always looking for big discounts. I won't offer any other um, larger discount, right? So please be aware of that. Uh, but there's no rush if you, if you don't feel like you're ready to sign up right now. Just feel free to message me. You know, you could you could follow me on Instagram. It's the third link in the description. And anytime at your own convenience, um, you can feel free to message me and ask for the discount, and I'd be more than happy to do it. So, how come you're not showing how much you're up or down in your position? Why are you covering the, your position from the other widget? Does anyone want to answer that question? Why would I not show how much I'm up or down? Right. Why would I? Why would I not show how much I'm up or down, right? Not not for you guys, but why would I not like to, you know, uh, we get asked this question all the time during our free live trading sessions. Blind trading challenge, yeah. So people responding are probably um, all part of our LPP team, right? I trade live with them every morning so they understand. What is a big part of trading, right? It's emotions, right? And what takes out emotions from people, right? It's how much you're up or down. So if I could remove that part and not see how much I'm up or down, then I should be less emotional, right? I should be less impulsive. I should make more decisions based off of what is actually happening and not so much based off of, you know, how much I'm up or down because how much I'm up or down is actually insignificant to the actual trade, right? It encourages me to focus on what's actually important and that's the trade itself, and to hold myself accountable for the best and even for the worst, right? So doesn't matter how much I'm up, doesn't matter how much I'm down. If I have to cut losses, I will cut losses regardless of how much I'm down, right? If I choose to lock in profits because, you know, it's overbought and it's in my best interest to lock in profits, then guess what? I will lock in profits, not because of how much I know I'm up, but because I'm at a resistance level where it makes sense to, you know, lock in profits. So it's a great question because I know it's genuine if you are newer uh, <laughs> because if, if you're newer to one of these live streams, yeah, we have some of our LVV members that are pretty funny. He's like, he's not showing it because it's none of your damn business. Just kidding. We, we like to joke around, right? If you don't have a sense of humor, then I don't think you'll, you'll work very well with our LPP team, right? Um, they normally like to pick on me versus anything else. So, and I prefer it that way. You guys can pick on me all you want. Dad jokes all day. Of course. What's a LPP live trading without the dad jokes? I don't know. It's not a live trading that I want to live for. You know? Expresso psychology. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. I find it very unprofessional when you blow your nose on the stream. I don't care. I'm human. 
right? We all blow our nose. I'm not farting on the screen purposely. I have allergies. If you find it unprofessional, then kick rocks. I, I generally do not care. I don't do it intentionally. I don't do it to piss you off. Testing, showing signs of a support. Signs of a resistance for QQQ. Oh, there it goes, looking bullish. Happy Friday, thanks for all the free tips. Enjoy your weekend. I appreciate that, go explore. Appreciate you, hope you have an amazing weekend as well. You guys see this resistance, right? These lower highs. So I'm waiting for confirmation if we do sell off. We definitely do not have to. Um, and this is kind of the challenging part where, you know, it's kind of the boring part of trading, where it's slowly showing signs of a reversal. So right now it would be best if you are cash because we don't know if it's gonna find its support here and take off or show resistance here and then sell off. <laughs> two dollars to the cause what's going on jeffrey happy friday man hope you have an amazing one that's sweet i appreciate that thank you thank you same to you <laughs> what's going on ellen uh, what are your thoughts on what's going on with INTC? Uh, give me a quick second. I'll, I'll break that one down for you, Jeff. Um, if you could just give me a quick second. I just, I need to um, see if we see a change of direction here because I'm going to have to manage my position size. So if we break above, I'm going to have to sell a portion of my SQQQ. How do you know your break even with the cost basis? Well, I don't know my exact break even. That's a really good question, Maggle. Uh, it just encourages me to pay more attention where my break even is. Uh, so, based off of how I was averaging up when QQQ was, you know, down here, I would not say that I'm break even right now. I would say that I'm in the red, based off of where we're currently at and where our SQQQ is at. So, it's but that's okay. I, I shouldn't again. I should not care or obsess about, I should not obsess. It doesn't mean that you can't care, um, but I should not obsess about am I break even or how much am I up or how much am I down. You always wanna have some form of risk management to make sure you don't lose more than you're comfortable with. But again, the amount that I'm up or the amount that I'm down is insignificant to the trade opportunity. If you trade the way that we talk about where your risk to reward ratios are in your favor, there's a specific downside that, hey, you know, if this thing makes new highs, I'm gonna cut losses, just like you saw that my position on SQQQ, right? Um, it's, it's the general idea of it, but you never want to, you know, if you're up $99 and you're holding to make 100, it's like, why? Like making that extra dollar is insignificant to that trade. It might make you happy because of how that number visually looks, but one of two things. You either didn't maximize that trade or you held that trade longer than you should have because it should never be with how much you're up or down that dignifies when you should execute that trade. It should be like, hey, we're at a specific level that it makes sense to sell and that should be enough. Or hey, I'm at a specific level where I'm gonna have to cut losses and I'm gonna have to sell here and that's all, right? It's not about how much I'm up or down. Uh, the second thing is, um, Give me a second, I'm gonna have to 
reduce it here. I'm going to do another 2,500 and I'm going to have to get ready for it. Again, our job is not to avoid risk. Our job is to manage it. And there it goes. There it goes. I should have gone stopped out on my first stop loss. Right? If you can't tolerate it at best case scenario or at worst case scenario, then you can't tolerate it at, at best case. Here it goes, retesting for us, QQQ, retesting support. I have my other um, stop loss right below previous lows, just so you are aware. So if we make new highs, we should be able to see. And there it goes, stop loss triggered, QQQ making new highs. So if it takes off, it takes off. All right. Look at that, taking off. The bulls are out. Where is the music? I know, right? Here it goes. Testing for new highs once again on TQQQ. There it goes, 2072. It's up 4% on the day. It does not look like it's stopping. Yeah. All right. So no, I, I was so why do you trade SQQ versus TQQQ? Um, I was trading TQQQ this morning. It was the first trade, right, that I had, and then I sold and locked in profits because I sought to be overbought. So, but I definitely was I was trading um, TQQQ first. And I'm happy I did right. It made sense, but I just viewed TQQQ to be overbought enough where it made sense to sell. Ricky, do you think that Tesla will hold at $200 range? It sounds like you have a position and that you're worried if it's going to break below. It's okay. It's okay, man. I mean, yeah, it could definitely break below. Um, there's a lot of crazy things that are going on. I think, I think that the market is relatively pretty close to um, the bottom, the bottom of, of, of where we should be. You know, we're seeing the economy slowing down. We're seeing um, we're seeing good signs of, of things not getting. I mean, really, the only thing that's still getting worse, and it's always somewhat delayed, it's the real estate market, right? The real estate market's still kind of, well, it's it's still like a little sad. Uh, but everything else, right? I feel like we're working towards getting out of the this kind of more challenging time. Um. I would say that I think that we're closer to the bottom than we are to the top. And with that being said, uh, you know, I think that's what's most important. Okay, we're showing signs of a resistance on QQQ. So please just be careful. We're not pulling back yet, but it's just to uh, have an exit plan, right? It's just to have an exit plan that if this thing begins to pull on back, that you don't give back all of your profits. Remember, I would love for you guys to keep your profits. So what's going on with INTC? Uh, I would have to look into the news of, I don't know if this thing reported earnings. Is it aftermarket hours? It reported yesterday. So I don't know if that was 
Yeah, it looks like it reported after market hours, and that's why it's rallying. So it's a short-term positive catalyst, and it probably is going to return back to its descending pattern. It has not been performing the best, right? Look at that. Especially in comparison to AMD and to NVIDIA, it's not really a world leader. In I mean, it's actually said it, too, that it's not going to work on uh, trying to continue to be the world leader in micro devices or uh, what's it called? Uh, micro semiconductors. Ricky, what is your favorite type of music? Uh, oh, shoot. Damn. Yeah, let's hear that. Uh, testing for new highs here on QQQ. The bulls still look like they do not want the market to pull on back. There's a lot of buying pressure, so we have to respect that. Um, my favorite music changes based off of my mood, right? If I'm hanging out with friends and we want to get rowdy, then I like rowdy music. If I'm chilling, then I like chill music. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't mind EDM or house music, but no, that's not my style. Here it goes. Here it goes. Definitely rowdy music, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Tesla's just struggling today, right? There's a lot of news behind Tesla, so I can't, I can't um, blame it. Okay, major. All right. There we go. Still testing new highs here. It's not stopping testing for $21 a share. I'm tempted to get in, but again, it's just the overall idea of like, how much more can we go up before we pull back? What are the risk to reward ratios, right? How much more upside versus downside risk? Do I want to get in because of FOMO, which is not a good thing, or do I want to get in because it actually makes sense? Which it does, right? Because it is bullish. <laughs> hmm. So I would like to put more money, but I already hit my target. Yeah, there's no reason to risk it then. Keep it simple, right? You hit your target, something most people can't do, right? Be proud of yourself. You shouldn't be afraid to take advantage of new risk, but you also shouldn't feel pressured to do it. Be more selective. Definitely, I agree with that. So Ricky, what type of Ferrari do you have? I have a Ferrari F8. Yeah, an F8 Tributo. Ricky, how was this week? We started off rough, Daniel. A lot of mistakes were made. This was a challenging week for me. I feel like the pressure just got to me. Um, you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself for this goal. I made a lot of impulsive decisions, but a lot of it was caught in our live trading sessions. And, you know, I paid the price for those mistakes. And that's good. You know, no one no one should ever be made to feel like they're invincible. You know, I had a, a two-week trading streak that was very... I was very grateful for it. and then I came out on the last week and I came out swinging and yeah it wasn't the best 100% so but again mistakes were made but it's all good All right, we're showing signs of a resistance. I thought we would get closer to $21 a share, but it looks like we peaked at 2084 for TQQQ. So let's see which way we end up going. Let's see if we actually pull on back. Looks like it's still struggling. Again, we should be testing a support range right around 2060. Let's see which way we go. Ricky, do you maintain any journal? Yeah, that's what I was uh, doing. I have my little journal right next to me, so anytime I make any mistakes or anything like that, um, my big takeaway from today is I should have done a better job locking in profits. Um, so it's just, you know, I, I retain information a little bit better when I um, write it down. You don't have to. We sell these trading journals on shoptechbuds.com. They're like $20. They're just called the Wall Street Trading Journal. And 
but you don't need one, right? It's fine if you just have a piece of paper. They're just, you know, for me, it's it's good to have a little thing that I can refer to anytime I make a mistake, that I hold myself accountable, that I write it out. So you still have those yellow journals. Now we replaced them with these red ones. So I feel like these red ones look a little better. Don't you guys agree? I like them. They're easier to find, in my opinion, and they look better. All right. Here it goes. We're testing that same support right around 2060 for TQQQ, right? NASDAQ market testing support. Watch for the break below or watch for the signs of a reversal. How has the land lowballing been going? Still sending out offers. No, I don't watch anime. Onions and cilantro, travel mom. Here it goes. Showing signs of a support once again. This is a great sign for the bulls. The great sign, a great sign for those that are trying to go bullish on it. Let's see if we can get into the mix. You guys think we should get in? Let's see if we break above. 2070. All right, got in with a thousand shares. If direction's still in our favor, thousand shares is relatively a light position for myself, so it's okay if things go south. But it looks like it's testing 2070. There it goes 2071, 2072. Let's see which way we go. How much money do I need to start? Like you, uh, Ahmad, you can start for free, you could start paper trading. I know Webull offers a paper trading platform. You're more than welcome to try that out. It's free. It encourages you to focus on learning, not so much about the making money part. Right? There's a lot of different ways on how you can start. You don't just, you, know, you should not start by hoping that you make money right away, right? Just like when you go to school, you can't expect to go to college and then expect to be making money for a career that you're studying. You learn first, and then you first need to take time to understand of what you're doing, and then you scale into, you know, trying to actually make money with it. Yeah, Webull is not on. So please do not spam the chat, or I will block you, and you'll never be able to comment again in any of our live chats. I have no reviews on TradingView. I don't use it. I don't care for it. I don't trade on it. I have nothing to say about it. I have nothing good, nothing bad to say about it. I'm using Webull, um, which is the fifth link in the description. So if you're in the US, it is an available platform only to those in the US. And that is that fifth link in the description. Okay. Oh no. Here we go. Here we go, testing that same resistance. See if we can add some more at new highs. <laughs> so you have to read this. 
and tell yourself to get on travel mom. Here it goes, testing, watch for new highs. Add another 20,000. You in the gym today, Ricky? Of course, Adam, you always hold me accountable, so I have to. Yes, sir. <laughs> there he goes, new highs. 2085, 2086. Still pushing. See if we can actually work towards $21 a share. <laughs> All right, it's struggling again. Oh boy. Why, why, why? Shares okay. Just making sure. Testing that resistance. Shout out from the Philippines. What's going on, man? Ricky, do you keep a trading journal? I do. I just showed it. I'm a real estate student. Do you think that a degree is worth it? I didn't know you could get a college degree for real estate. I was unaware. I, something I'll have to look into. At it. What 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 do they teach you that you don't learn from being a real like getting your license? I don't know. I I, don't, I was unaware of that. Yeah, I guess student doesn't mean college. Yeah. So, are you like a real estate agent or trying to become a real estate agent? Here it goes, direction's still in our favor. You don't need it, okay. Oh, there you go, we got Anne. Is it Eckstein? Realtor, I like that. I like the registered trademark on it. It's dope. Hmm. <sighs> Trying to see if we get it at $21 a share. This thing's definitely slowing down. It's getting a little. A little slower, a little bit more boring. This is the sad part of trading, right? It's just a move so dang slow sometimes. But it's nice when direction's in your favor. It's much easier. Right? I'm going to get my shares ready to sell. 4,000 shares. Here we go. Let's see if we make new highs. Here we go. Approaching a 5% day for TQQQ. Think that we can all agree that it's well overdue. There it goes, 2090. Going back to retest previous highs of around $21. That was yesterday's resistance. This should be quite interesting. If we look at QQQ, yep, should be around 278. All right. Two ninety four. All right. It's 
It's going to break the room. Yeah, we'll see. So Raphael, again, if you don't want to trade, you definitely don't have to, right? If it's if it's something that, you know, it's something that doesn't, you know, is something that you don't work well with. Uh, with this one, we're simply focusing on direction. Direction's in our favor, right? So uh, it's asking the question, you know, risk to reward, you know, if, if I take advantage of a, an opportunity and just a three to one ratio, right? 3% upside, 1% downside. And I see the risk to be worth it. Then yeah, there there is a chance that things obviously go south. But as long as I do it in a calculated way, then it's calculated risk. But again, if this not if this is not something that you work well with, it's totally okay. Again, you know you don't have to. It's it's, it's all um, based off of what what it is that you want to do. So you don't have to trade. You can invest, or you cannot choose to do any of it. Right. What are you guys saying? $150 over my goal for the week. Thank you, Ricky. That's all you, Cindy. Congratulations on that trade. All right, all right. Here it goes, $21 a share. Watch for the break above. Does it look like it's slowing down? Should we continue to hold? No, it's pushing. It's definitely pushing. Look at that. Add a little bit more to this. We broke above a resistance level and it does not look like it's slowing down. So instead of locking in profits, you're more than welcome to lock in profits on your side. I'm going to choose to add more to it. Please do not copy me. Please focus on yourself. Look out for yourself. Do not be afraid to lock in profits. I do not need you to hold. I'm not here to be like other YouTubers to try to convince you to hold with me or to buy with me. If anything, it would make me happier seeing that you decided to lock in profits, okay? Look out for yourself, please, please, please. So remember, uh, why is the market going up? Uh, although some of the reports were bad today, I mean, one was actually better than expected. So the report of pending home sales, it being worse than expected, that's actually a really good thing right now. Uh, on top of that, market is so oversold that remember, anytime the market is this oversold, it doesn't need much for it to justify this, you know, bull rally, right? Market's so oversold that the deals are present. So why not, you know, have this nice little rally if things are not getting worse? It's not that things are getting better, it's that things are simply not getting worse. And that's enough of a reason on why market direction is in, you know, in our favor. All right, we are looking a little bit on the overbought side. Let's see if we pull on back here. Yeah, it's struggling to pull on back. I'm sure it will, but it's definitely struggling for how overbought it is, which is a good sign 
for bulls, right? It's a good sign for bulls. Look at that. Higher lows. <laughs> a little? It's so overbought. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I know it's overbought, but direction's in our favor, right? There's no reason to overcomplicate it. Direction is in our favor. I like those higher lows. That's a good sign for TQQQ. Let's see if we can make new highs. We are now at previous resistance. That is correct. This is why I made everyone aware of, you know, maybe it's not a bad idea for you guys to lock in profits. If you guys could see, again, old support level right around 21. Old resistance level, right? Old supports become new resistance. You get to see that right around 21 from two days ago and then yesterday. So nothing wrong with choosing to lock in profits if that's what you decide to do. Like I said, please, 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 I can't stress this enough. Look out for yourself. Look out for your profit. We're not a reddit group here we're not a meme trading group right we're not going to be like hold for the movement hold 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 or bash you because you decide to look out for yourself i want you to look out for yourself i need you to look out for yourself playing it safe is, is not a bad thing not when you're just getting started it's true even when you're choosing to make money right it's never a bad idea please 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 look out for yourself So does anyone have any suggestions on how you can get into this? First off, I mean, we have a get started playlist on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's a three part playlist. It's free. You're welcome to check that out. But there's obviously a lot to learn. Uh, we talk about different trading platforms. We talk about three stages of a reversal of one to buy a stock. And then we talk about um, we show another live trading session. So you're more than welcome to check that out, especially if you're absolutely new to the market. And I encourage you that before you open up an account and you just start trying to throw money at something and hope that it grows take time understand what it is that it's you know how to do what you need to do at least to protect your downside and then you can transition into actually trading but before any of that again you need to take time to learn this is not something that you just jump into doing and fingers crossed and hope you get lucky right it's a challenging market so I started with a small account. I think that's the best way to do it. Start with a small account or a paper account. Do it. That's what I like about your trading style. You're responsible, of course. You like to keep, like to keep things simple. You know. You guys making money. That's that's all we ever want to see. Yeah, would my stop loss be at the EMA? It would, yeah. Rebull doesn't work in the UAE. It doesn't, no. Here it goes. Forming higher lows. A great sign for TQQQ. Let's see if we hold above this $21 range. Potential rejection, I agree. But it is showing signs of a support. It's struggling to pull on back. This is showing characteristics of, you know, the bulls are still here. Buying pressure is high. And this is where people really get upset. Because they're like, why doesn't it pull back? Why doesn't it pull back? It's just bullish. Momentum is in its favor. Right? And there it goes. It struggles to pull on back. And then it recovers in a very short period of time. We talk about taking the stairs down and the elevator up. Right? That's the analogy people like to use. Done for the day. Thank you for the stream, Ricky. Always a pleasure. Enjoy your weekend. I like that, man. I appreciate it. 
I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, if you end up joining LPP, right, um, or if you're part of it, I think you actually you are a part of it. So uh, I'll see you on Monday at Market Open for our live trading. So hope you enjoy your weekend. Um, let's see how many people. We still have 3,000 people. Maybe Should we continue to host the live? I don't know. Should we? Let's see if you guys can get this video to 2,000 likes. All right. Yeah. All right. You guys better start liking it up. There it goes. Testing for new highs. We're at 1,300 likes. Still not 2,000. There we go. We got 13... One three three three. Right, Fourteen hundred, halfway there. Do you host a live trading every day? Every day the market's open, yeah. But I do it normally just for our Learn Plan Profit group, right? So it's our private group. It's the second link in the description if you want to learn more about it. You don't have to join. We're just we're offering a sell right now. It's $150 off. So, you know, you can learn how to trade on your own 100%. It's just asking the simple question of how much time and how long will it take for you to do this on your own? Or you can join our group. We have it all laid out for you and you get to watch me trade live every day. So it's a one-time payment, lifetime access, and it's the second link down below. Yeah, no monthly fee, no yearly fee, a one-time payment. You get access to the a to Z video lesson library designed for complete beginners, daily live trading session, private LPP group chat, and then you get access to our TechBuds HQ if you ever want to visit us here in Chandler, Arizona. There's no one else that offers anything we offer. No one offers a building um, if you want to use the space. No one offers a live trading like how we do. Um, and I update the lesson library you know, every one to two years. And there's no charge for the update. It's just markets are changing. I want to make sure that the value that we provide is updated as well. And the only thing that I would charge you for are my dad jokes. You know, just kidding. Just kidding. So isn't this only members? So right today we're hosting a free live. We host it about once a month. So sometimes we don't even host it. But once a month I host a free live just to give people a taste of what it's like to be a part of LPP. So how do we get access to the building if you're a member? You just message me uh, via Discord that you want to come visit and we'll make sure that we have a spot available for you. That's all. How long do you usually stream? A minimum of 30 minutes. Our average has been around an hour. An hour to an hour and a half every morning. You can rewatch them at any time. At your own convenience, you can watch them live. All right. And again, it's the second link in the description of this video. Okay. So please, um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to send me a message via Instagram. That's that third link in the description. But if you don't see the links, refresh it. It's where it says description. Click on it. And it's the second link. It should say $150 off. Thanks for the live, Ricky. Como, I appreciate it. All right. Looks like we have a resistance here right around $21, guys. It's getting a little bit boring. Uh, I'm going to reduce my position by 2,500 shares. It's not anything crazy, but there's just no reason to be in something if, if direction is not in my favor. So... Wait. Did it sell? No, I don't think it's home. All right. I'm going to sell it all. 2029. I have to leave myself with my lucky share. So just because I decide to sell does not mean that you need to. I just don't like that it's trading sideways. It's just not worth it for me now. Uh, I'll keep you guys up to date um, on my overall trades. Uh, if you're part of LPP, I'll keep you up to date on the trade ideas section on what I do. Um, it looks like it's beginning to slow down. And um, again, guys, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but if it begins to slow down and it begins to show signs of resistance and the rest of the market begins to fall, 
just know that just as quick as we pushed up, we can easily push down. Again, on our green days, we prepare for our red days, and on our red days, we prepare for our green days. So it doesn't matter which way the market ends up going. Your job is to prepare for worst case scenario every single time. I don't want to hear any excuses of but or if or I wasn't next to my desk, then you shouldn't have an open position, right? Hold yourself accountable. It's either set a stop loss, trailing stop, anything. But please do not give back all of the profits that you made, that you earned. And the only way that you can actually earn them is if you lock them in. Please, 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 please. Um, I think it's super important for you to um, take your downside into consideration. Your job is not to prepare during a sell-off. It's in advance. So um, I really do appreciate you guys' time. Hope that we earned your thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. And again, if you are ready to join our Learn Plan Profit Group, that is going to be that second link in the description. And yes, that is the biggest discount that we offer. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on our green note. Take it easy, team. Really do appreciate you guys' time. And 